efficient first half for you with some more off target passes uh, in the second half I guess mm -hmm. how do you how do you go about smoothing that out as games progress yeah I mean but it's all it's right. Right. It's all right. don't worry because <laughs> 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 don't worry because I mean you, you look at Caitlin and you look at the way she passes the ball and so sometimes things are going to happen that way and that's okay because we're not going to let her hang her head we're not going to hang our head off of any missed passes because we're still continuing to gel together, and we know that she's a great passer. So if she thinks she can get that ball there, she's going to throw it. And if, if I miss it, then it's, we're, we're good. We're all right. We're good. And that's how you do it. Finally, guys, welcome back to Charge the Game podcast. Chuck here. As you guys know, I am a huge fan of Kaylin Clark, man. Um, You know, her resilience, you know, the way that she continues to show up, you know what I'm saying? And obviously, it seems like it's a sin or illegal, you know, for a black man to support a white woman, right? A white Caucasian athlete. But it's not, there's no problem with Caucasian supporting LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Mike Tyson, you name it. I mean, whatever, right? But that's another topic. You guys just know I got to get that in, right? But Caitlin Clark, man, uh, we guys, we all know how, you know, her rookie season has been going thus far. And uh, it's just been a straight up roller coaster, a straight up clown show in the WNBA. And the most resilient person out of all of these rookies, <laughs> I mean, it seems to be Caitlin Clark. I mean, she's not, you know, speaking out. She isn't being a kiss ass like most of these rookies. And of course, you know, you got people who feel like she's in the spotlight for the wrong reasons when she just simply wants to play basketball. But I want to touch topics on something that Leah Boston is doing that I just feel like, why aren't other women doing this? And that's simply going alone and getting alone. Getting alone, going alone. Go alone, get alone, gang, as Kwame Brown likes to say, right? Maybe I said that wrong. I don't know. But I thought to myself, you know what will really make a lot of WNBA players popular? If they show support towards Kaitlyn Clark and any other rookies, not just Kaitlyn Clark, any other rookies, I have yet to see an OG, OG out of the WNBA uh, players come and say, you know what, I'm going to stick up for her. Do you know what they would do to like that player stock? Honestly, if a Brittany Griner, who just went through the most crucial situation of her life, trying to smuggle drugs into another country, did not get to stand up. Did not stand up for the USA flag, wants to stand up for her own flag and equal rights, but yet she gets to go represent America. Anyway, guys, let me get back to it. Do you guys know what it would do to a player if they stood up and supported Kaitlyn Clark? Right? Especially if it wasn't her teammate. And I want to give kudos to Aaliyah Boston, man, because I feel like when I watch her interviews, I feel like she comes from a good environment i could be wrong but i feel like she comes from a good environment and i hope that she isn't being fake for the camera and if you come from a good environment you have to have people that will tell you hey man like i'm the type if i was Aaliyah boston's father or brother cousin i would say look you need to you need to defend that girl obviously she isn't from your neck of the woods my neck of the woods she isn't built like that you need to go out there and defend that girl and you can see the chemistry is gelling. Four wins, four straight wins, Indiana Fever, worst team in the league. But the amount of pressure, I mean, it's like LeBron James-esque. I mean, yeah, she didn't get drafted straight out of high school. But to see her carrying this team, man, and, you know, still taking the bumps and bruises, getting the rookie treatment, that's fine. But to see all of the hatred going against her from other players seems like the refs are in on a lot of this shit uh man that's very admirable and like i told you guys in, in one of my videos and i've actually made a few shorts if you guys want to go check it out where i said that america is behind caitlin clark and white america is behind caitlin clark so of course you're going to see cult-like things happening that's just what it is right and she's also becomes She's she's also became one of America's sweethearts, right? She thought she like she liked to throw the heart up and shit. So she's become a sweetheart. And for some reason, the more she doesn't fight these nasty, angry, bitter women, 
more people embrace her. More people want to come out and stand up for her. You know what I'm saying? Like I use my platform, uh, you know, pretty much to talk sports, but I also use my platform to support her. And think about this, guys. There's so many black athletes that support Caitlin Clark, especially the GOATs. Like you got Serena Williams supporting her. And you got LeBron James supporting her. You can got Patrick Mahomes. I know he's mixed. But you got three GOATs who are in this girl's corner because what do you think? It's similarities. It's just like, no, I know how that feels to be the underdog and people don't believe you. And you just have to keep your mouth closed and keep showing them. And I believe that her resilience has won her teammates over. Straight up. Her resilience, man, is winning her teammates over. And it's not coincidental that they're gelling like this. Look at this steel frame here. You see the gestures. You see the smiling. When Kaylin Clark first joined the WNBA, Indiana Fever, it was none of this chemistry, none of this cohesion, right? Look at it now. Because you know what she did, what she's showing? She's showing that cha- she's showing championship pedigree, right? She's showing that she has heart. And she's showing that through it all, I'm going to support my teammates and keep my head down. I don't care what type of heart you have. You got to tip your hat towards that. You got to respect that. And I get that most people want sports to be divided. I'm one of the people where I don't like to bring race, racism into sports because I feel like it kills it. Do I feel like Andrew Reese is a good player? Yes. Do I feel like Cameron Brink? Yeah, I know I got a crush on Cameron Brink. Do I feel like she's a good player? Yes. But do I feel like the eye test, like the 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 relatability, like Caitlin Clark does things Steph Curry as Steph Curry is very popular because of the aesthetics of her game. Caitlin's form, her speed, her build, like her simple headband and ponytail. It's marketable. You just get behind that. And she's getting so much scrutiny, good or bad. You know, regardless of what these WNBA players feel, we don't care. We were not watching you guys. I was not watching you guys. I have a daughter who loves basketball. (laughs) And uh, we go watch a lot of big three games, but we don't go to WNBA games. If Kaylin Clark comes to Dallas or the next time she comes comes to Dallas, I plan on going to see this young lady play. Because it's very rare that you see something, especially in the beginning, her first year, literally shattering shattering ratings i mean and you see her play transition from college yes we know that a lot of the rookie class brought in the attention the eyes the eyeballs the sexual appeal but i don't even get there from kaylin clark i'm gonna be honest with you guys before i found out she had a boyfriend i thought that she was you know in that community which i still respect but It goes to show you that we're not looking at Kaylin Clark because of how she looks. We're looking at her because she's a sensational talent. And I do feel like because she's a heterosexual female in a community where it's more non-heterosexual, that she's an outcast. And that I believe a lot of these women secretly like her. And they can't stand the fact that she's straight. They can't stand the fact that she's resilient. And they can't stand the fact that she cannot be broken. Oh, my goodness. I mean, if you guys ever, uh, I forget this movie called, but it's it's pretty much about a prisoner of war. And I think he was like in Japan. He got captured and uh, they could not break this guy through and through. He could not break this guy, no matter how bad he was getting beat. And I just feel like the attention that Caitlin Clark uh, has gained her fan base just continues to grow. Yes, a lot of WNBA players, right? A lot of WNBA players have come and gone before Caitlin Clark. And I know everybody wants to say Aja Wilson, right? Great, phenomenal talent. Her play style to me is pretty good. But she just didn't get the attention at the right time. Doesn't mean that she isn't a great player. There are plenty of players that are better than Caitlin Clark. But what do I say, man? Like, Kaylin Clark has a welcoming aura, can get her ass beat on the floor, get up smiling, showing kids that, hey, I'm going to be here for you guys regardless. I'm going to sign these autographs for you guys regardless. I'm humble that you guys show up to support me. The least I could do is give my heart to you guys and show you guys that I do appreciate that. I feel like if most women would do 
what Aaliyah Boston is doing. I don't get it. That's her teammate. So everybody going to say, oh, can't do that. She's not my teammate. Yes, you can. You can support her and grow together. That's what men in the NBA do. Hey, these are alpha men. Men who are not going to do too much chirping and will literally fight one another. But you see them come together and support one another because, hey, it's enough for all of us to eat. Yes, I might not be LeBron James, but I got them millions. There ain't too much that it, he can buy that I can't, right? I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, you could be a billionaire, but he got a few millions. I mean, like, hey, you can't spend a billion dollars in a day. But guess what? Anything LeBron James can buy for the most part, most NBA players can. And for the most part, most NBA men care about feeding their families. It's no sense to feud when you can have all of this. So what do they do? They support one another. And I was watching Aaliyah Boston do this, man, and she has now gained a lot of my respect. And I hope that this continues because winning feels good, right? You saw them go through ugly stints, but they've been losing. Now they, I think what, they held the, the eighth seed or something like that. I think that they now are in the playoffs. That's very impressive seeing where this team is now compared to the previous years. And let's be honest, guys, no one was watching the WNBA. So it always leaves me perplexed that women who don't even watch sports for the most part most women don't know sports okay they come out and they it's all this angel reese back and forth this crap that crap and i'm like you guys are sticking up for a lady and you guys don't even watch the sport i know females that can't tell you a damn thing about basketball i believe that angel reese man and i hate to you know shine a light on angel reese like this but hey it is what it is angel reese PR team if she has one she definitely needs to hire one if she doesn't have one they need to do a better job at her marketing because I get it she has to stay the villain to stay relevant but you can see in the post game pressers man and shout out to you Angel Reese because I can see straight through you you can see in the post game pressure that Angel Reese does not even want to be the villain she's only big and bad when her teammates are next to her but when she's sitting there all lonely you know, I guess, you know, some people just got a special whistle, guys. I don't know. Because she feels the heat. She feels that no matter what she's doing, she's still not going to get in any discussions. Nobody's going to talk about you except the angry people who want to support you and they don't even watch. If they really want to support you, they will watch the WNBA when you play. But when Kaylin Clark is, you know, playing against you, you feel like you're the reason that those ratings are like that. But when you're not, you know, playing Caitlin Clark, nothing. You're not getting the ratings that she's getting consistently. So that, I mean, I understand that, you know, in school, Angel Reese had a 1.7 GPA or something like that. But I like to think that you are still a smart person, Angel. You don't have to play into this narrative. You don't have to be this ugly, stereotype person. Let's just be honest. You don't have to act like that. And I get it. It's good for the league, but... The league has to understand that they have a responsibility. Kaitlyn Clark fans are threatening to stop watching the game. It's pretty much a silent boycott. So if these fans, if and when they stop supporting because of what they see going on with someone they're heavily rooting for, it's going to turn them off. And then guess what? None of you guys, none of you WNBA players are going to eat. The problem is these WNBA players want the spotlight. But they're not getting it. And we all know this. Why are we lying to each other? You see the women on first take seething, like honestly seething and being so angry because maybe when they were in the league, listen, nobody, I don't even know these ladies on first take. I don't even know their names, but they become more and more annoying because they're so aggressive with their anger and their hate and the Britney grinders of the world and like, Come on, man. You just got here. You were overseas, a prisoner of war, basically. And this is how you come back with this attitude. You should be gracious and happy that America did what they did for your ass, honestly. But, you know, I feel like most of these WNBA players, if they were smart, if I was a WNBA player, I'd make a name for myself by defending all of the rookies. i come out, show love, show support, because guess what? Eventually, it's going to lead to me. You know, getting that notoriety, that attention, endorsements, and more money in my pockets. But because it's more popular to side with the mean, the mean girls, you guys are going to stay broke. Because I don't know. I think that you guys have a one to three year window to prove it to the world 
on and convince us to continue to watch this sport. But the way you guys are acting, I can tell you now, it's not going well. Because we, we already know that you guys are pretty much missing out on $50 million this year again. You're going to lose $50 million. Half of that went to the, the Charter Jets. I get it, the $25 million. But even with the ratings of Caitlin Clark, which is a smart investment, she is a gateway. If you are an OG, where's your your agent should be telling this to you guys. But you know what? The WNBA commissioner, the head coaches are afraid of all of these angry, aggressive women in the WNBA. Let's be honest. Most of this league is dominated by black, aggressive women. So they're mad. They they. Nobody, these, these, excuse me, guys, I'm not trying to be funny, but these, these timid Caucasian coaches, they, they don't be trying to, they don't want no smoke. Okay. The referees seem like they don't want any smoke. Angel Reese got her stuff rescinded because they just don't want to hear that, that angry ass shit. Okay. They don't want to hear it. And I feel like the WNBA commissioner should either resign or step up, man, because we're trying to watch and support this, but it's just to the point where I'm just like, man, like, man, it's too much cattiness, too much drama. When men, when, when men have drama, it's more just still about basketball. So kudos to uh, the Indiana Fever, man, for, for doing what they're doing. And shout out to Aaliyah Boston, man. And, and shout out to her teammates for finally coming to her defense. So you guys tell me what y'all think on this situation as Aaliyah Boston seems to finally be stepping up to you know help her teammate Kaylin Clark and in a way you guys can see that it's shedding the spotlight on her and you see the on the court chemistry you see the ball movement you see the no look passes the way that she's dishing it to uh, uh Aaliyah Boston in traffic and it's producing the W's and that's all that matters so you guys tell me what y'all think about this video and you guys tell me what y'all think about this theory thank you guys so much for watching see you guys next time peace yeah